Welcome back, World History 2 students. Mr. Deegan here with another edition of VidNotes videos. Today, we're going to be continuing our study of Unit 3, The Age of Exploration, and we are on to Lesson 5, Eastern Civilizations, Part 2. Let's go on. We have our continuation of the world tour. We talked last lesson about the Ottoman Empire and the Mughal Empire. Today, we're going to be talking about the Songhai Empire in Western Africa. It's one of the most successful empires in Africa. We're then going to be talking about China and Japan. And we're going to continue to explore this big question. How did Eastern civilizations respond to European trade? Now, we're going to talk about an African empire, the Songhai Empire. And the most successful ruler of the Songhai Empire was Askia the Great. He built a reputation for the empire. The empire existed from 1464 until 1591, and it existed in Western Africa. You see here, just south of the Sahara Desert and near the Atlantic Ocean coast. Who lived in the Songhai Empire? Well, people who lived there were farmers and traders who practiced the religion of Islam, making them Muslims. And as I said, they were active traders. The Niger River, which you see here, flows through the Songhai Empire, and it connected the Trans-Saharan trade route to the Atlantic Ocean. Why was this empire significant? Well, one point was that it had a well-educated society. A visitor to the empire in 1513 said this in his journal. Here, there are many doctors, judges, priests, and other learned men that are well-maintained at the king's cost. Various written books are brought here out of Barbary and sold for more money than any other merchandise. Books were important. Education was emphasized. In addition, the Songhai Empire of Africa participated in the slave trade. That same visitor had this to say in his journal. Here, there is a certain place where slaves are sold, especially on those days when the merchants are assembled. And a young slave of 15 years of age is sold for six ducats, and children are also sold. The king of this region has a certain private palace where he maintains a great number of slaves. So Askia the Great encouraged the slave trade. The Songhai Empire also traded often with Europe and the Americas, and the Songhai Empire exported slaves, ivory from elephant tusks, and gold. It imported and brought into its empire manufactured goods from Europe, Asia, and the Americas, and new foods. We talked about that with the Colombian Exchange. Corn and peanuts from the Americas were brought into Africa. In addition to the Songhai Empire, we have the Empire of China. And the Qing Dynasty is the last Chinese dynasty. Dynasty means a ruling time period when one family ruled. The Qing Dynasty existed from 1644 to 1911, a 250 year dynasty. Who lived there? Largely the people practiced Buddhism, and there were a few Muslims in the Qing Dynasty in China as well. The most successful emperor of the Qing Dynasty was Emperor Kangxi, and he successfully fought off foreign takeovers. And here you see the Qing Dynasty existing. The Qing Dynasty had an imperial policy that controlled foreign influence and trade. The leaders of the Qing Dynasty didn't need European help and didn't want it. They were fearful that with European traders brought 
a new and different culture that would make the Chinese culture impure. So Chinese rulers set up enclaves. What were enclaves? Restricted areas where foreign merchants could trade. And this map shows you different enclaves in China. Every pushpin is a different foreign enclave for foreign traders. China traded with Europe in a limited way, as we said, and the key exports for China were tea and porcelain. European citizens loved Chinese porcelain dishware. Moving on to the Empire of Japan. And during this time, the Japanese were ruled by the Tokugawa shogunate. They were a military government, and they existed from 1603 until 1868, another empire that existed for more than 250 years. Who lived in this empire, the Tokugawa shogunate? Largely Buddhists. And the man in this upper right-hand corner drawing is Tokugawa Ieyasu. He is the founder of the shoguns in Japan. How was this empire created? It was created out of a civil war between East and West Japan in 1600. East Japan, who was led by Ieyasu, won the war eventually, and he and his family seized control of the country. And that is when the shoguns take power. The shoguns are samurai warriors with more power than the Japanese emperor. And here is a shogun in battle. The Tokugawa shogunate of Japan during this empire did not, did not trade with Europe. The shoguns had a policy of isolationism that limited foreign influence. They were even more worried about foreign influence than the Chinese empire, the Qing dynasty. And their policy was called Sakoku. And you see the Japanese characters here. In English, Sakoku means locked country. And the idea was no foreigner could enter Japan nor could any Japanese leave the country on penalty of death. The shogunate was very serious about their Sakoku policy. We are nearly done with lesson five. Please now answer the summary questions in your notes. Until that next unit, this is Mr. Deegan signing off.